Okay, good morning everybody. Welcome back to today's video. Today we're doing the Mine Hill Gravel Challenge and my coffee's just finished. Anyway, uh, we're doing the Mine Hill Gravel Challenge and it is the second year that we're doing this. Last year we did three laps of the course, which is equivalent to 40 miles. This year we're doing two laps of it. Last year, I think I may have bonked after the second lap and uh, didn't do so well. Um, I was holding on to second place until the after the, the second lap and I faded and the third place woman uh, passed me. And so I came in with my tails between my legs and came in at third place. Uh, the reason why we're doing two laps this year is because we're doing the Highlands Fondo next weekend and I don't want too much fatigue in my legs and not be able to do 60 miles next week so that's why we're doing a shorter uh, shorter course this year so it's gonna be pretty exciting because uh, now I'm working on or I've been working on fueling strategies I've been working on strength training and uh, also building up my my fitness and I think that you know this that will pay off and also having done high point um, and holding threshold heart rate for over 30 minutes uh, is going to really help me on this race it's if you can uh, we did a video on this last year but it's the same course as last year and there are two climbs uh, the first climb is called Shiner Mountain and the second is West Churchill and they are about for me It's about a nine minute and a five minute climb and Shiner is a little bit longer than than West Churchill So it's going to be a bunch of VO2 max intervals Once we hit the climbs and then recover on the flats and it's downhill going back to the distillery where we do a loop uh, and then do the second the second lap. I wasn't sure if I would be able to do to do this one because shortly after the high point time trial I developed some quad tendonitis and um, fortunately with the the help of our our coach who's also a physical therapist um, had an, a good physical therapy session with her and um, she taped it up and gave me some exercises to do and um, it started started feeling better shortly after that uh, so we've been just kind of taking it easy with training the last uh, couple weeks um, very low volume and um, any workouts that I've done have been at high cadence so um, the fortunately the the knee feels has it's pretty much always felt fine when I'm riding the bike but it was off the bike that I was getting pain when when I squatted down and so forth the knee started feeling better just in general even when I was off the bike um, about a about a week ago or a week and a half ago and um, still been taking it kind of easy with training but managed to do a couple of workouts and um, the knee feels, it feels like it's 100%. So I decided to sign up for the Mine Hill race, um, but instead of doing the 39 mile distance that we did last year, I'm doing the 26 mile, which Joy also signed up for, um, for different reasons. Um, but I decided to do the, the 26 miler thinking it would, um, it would be a little safer uh, since I'm not totally sure how the knee will react to a to a race scenario. Um, so hopefully it goes okay. I'm I'm gonna give it a try. My goal was to finish in under one hour and 50 minutes because last year, even though I did three laps of this course, I completed the first two laps in an hour and 56 minutes. <laughs>
The start, as predicted, started out hard, trying to follow the front group. I wanted to see how long I could go, but I also wanted to save my legs for Shiner Mountain, a short but steep gravel road with sandy, ruddy sections. While I wanted to be competitive, I also went into the rates without expectations, so my stress level was relatively low compared to high point. My goal was just to have fun and do my best. As for strategy, I was hoping to latch on to a fast group at the beginning of the race. Most of the course is gentle rolling terrain except for a couple of steep climbs in the middle on Shiner Mountain Road and West Churchill Road. Ideally, I wanted to ride behind a group of faster riders and have them pull me along for the first few miles until we reached Shiner, where I would inevitably get dropped. But similar to last year, I didn't have enough acceleration at the start, and I found myself way off the back within the first minute. I did manage to draft behind a few guys here and there on the paved section until we got to the first dirt road, Judge Bridge. I decided to let the front group go until I found a group of guys to ride with that were going my pace. Living 20 minutes away from the race course gave me a home field advantage. In the past few weekends, I did a few hard gravel rides on this course and practiced how I was going to approach Shiner. I also prepped myself with how the effort was going to feel, knowing the first time around up Shiner, my legs were going to feel some burn. Up ahead, I saw that Joy was riding with a few guys. I bridged up to them on a short descent, then got on Joy's wheel while we went through a section of rollers. I got a little free speed in that section.
<clears throat> I definitely felt the burn the first time, but I knew my muscles just needed some time to wake up. My breathing was also slightly labored, but again, I embraced that feeling knowing I wasn't going to blow up and it's just my lungs and muscles needing oxygen. Once we reached the flatter part of Judge Bridge, I decided to go ahead and see if anyone would follow me. I wasn't going hard, only around tempo, because I wanted to save my legs for Shiner. No one jumped on my wheel, but one of the guys gradually bridged up to me and we started to climb side by side. He went a little bit ahead of me, and he was going at roughly the same pace that I wanted to go, so I followed him. Not that you can really get a draft on Shiner, but I used him as a, as a pacer. It worked out nicely. After grinding up Shiner, I used a downhill to recover before making a left turn onto West Churchill. There was a rider ahead of me that looked like a fun carrot to chase. I felt like a shark slowly stalking my prey, little by little gaining on him. I patiently waited, just keeping an eye on him. I made it up both Shiner and West Churchill climbs in decent time while not going too far into the red. In addition to using this guy as a pacer, I also let the terrain dictate my effort level, going harder on the steep pitches and backing off on the moderate sections. this race almost entirely by feel. I only glanced at my power meter a few times just to make sure I wasn't doing anything stupid. I felt like I know this course well and I'm starting to learn how to go faster by putting out the power in specific places rather than trying to maintain a steady power throughout. 
The guy I was following up the climbs did get a small gap on me at the top of West Church Hill, and he descended it faster than I did, so I found myself alone when I got to the bottom. But I was okay with that, because the next section of the course is slightly downhill, and I knew where all the potholes were, so I just got into an aero position and did some more tempo to go fast through that section. After the descent, I found a group to pull me through to the start-finish line to start my second lap. By the time I looped back to Judge Bridge Road, I caught up to my climbing pacer right before we started the moderate climb that leads you back to the paved road. As we got near the top of the climb, I felt like I wanted to go a bit faster and then recover on the downhill. So I accelerated over the top of the climb, then started descending towards Century Hill Road. It's a slight downhill right turn from gravel to pavement, and I knew it would be a little sketchy. Right on your left. I feathered the brakes as I got closer to the right turn onto Century Hill, but I felt like I wasn't slowing down enough heading into the turn. So I continued to hold onto the brakes as I turned onto the pavement. I hit some loose dirt and I slid out and went down, landing on my right hip and elbow. Fortunately, there was a course marshal at this intersection, and he had some first aid supplies, and he helped wrap my forearm and elbow to stop the bleeding. My hip was also bleeding, but not badly, as the tightness of the bib shorts applied enough pressure. I was only a couple miles away from the start and finish area, so I got back on the bike and rode there, and event volunteers helped me with some additional first aid supplies. Um, uh, do, you, do you happen to have any band-aids or... First date. Well, the camera missed it, uh, but I think Jason went down on the corner. Oh. It was after the turn when I realized Jason went down. He was standing up, so I knew he was fine. In fact, when I finished my first lap, I saw him riding in the opposite direction. At this point, I still didn't know what the extent of his injuries were, but it was a relief to see him on the bike again.
Well, guys, I just had a crash going around the turn there, and uh, I don't think anything's broken, but got some cuts on my elbow and leg, my hip. Um, so, uh, fortunately, there was a there was a course marshal right there, and he helped uh, bandage me up a little bit. I'm just heading back to I'm, I'm fairly close to the to the starting point, so I'm just going to head back there and get further. Uh, bandages but my day is done on the bike unfortunately too bad because I felt like I was doing pretty well up until that point When I got to Shiner on the second lap, the temperature got warmer. There was a short exposed section on the climb that felt grueling with the heat, but I stayed calm. Sorry for the heavy breathing. No, you. <coughs> you got it. Looks like you're almost there. Thank you. After making it up Shiner, I knew I had one more five minute effort or so left on West Churchill. On your left, on your left. Thank you. Okay, last hill. There was a runner who passed me on the climb, but he was yo-yoing back and forth. I finally caught back up to him again. I'm curious. Are you going to get off the bike and walk? I think so. Twenty-six. Oh my. 
good luck. Thank you. You too. I didn't want to have a conversation with him knowing I was almost at my limit. So I pushed a little harder to get a good distance. Okay, downhill. From there came the descent and then back to the finish line. I recovered a bit and rode hard. I'm done for the day. I, I'm, no, I'm the one that had a crash. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. If if you have like a gauze or so, something that, that I could um. Because I have, uh, fortunately, I... I couldn't help but be disappointed in myself for making a bike handling mistake that not only costed me a chance at a good race result, but also set my training back for several weeks at minimum. And needless to say, it's no fun dealing with the aftermath of road rash and other wounds. But crashing is part of the inherent risk of cycling, and especially racing. I'm well aware of the risk and it's something that I've accepted because I love to ride. Having said that, the next time I make the right turn from Judge Bridge to Century Hill Road, I will be going at a snail's pace. I can always make up the lost seconds somewhere else. Unfortunately, my camera died before the finish, but Jason was able to record me on the last stretch. I came away with a win and fifth place in the overall standing. I had the best power numbers I'd seen in a long time, averaging 148 watts with a normalized power of 170 watts and an official time of an hour and 48 minutes and eight seconds. Regardless of the way my day ended, there are still many positives. First and foremost, I was impressed by Joy's performance and was thrilled to see her get her first win in a start to finish race. Her 
her success means a lot to me, and it's exciting to see her on an upward trajectory, because I witness how hard she works at becoming a better cyclist, and we talk about training on a daily basis. It really is fun going through this process together. As for myself, I'm very happy with my performance in the portion of the race that I completed. I was able to ride at a faster pace than last year without being on the limit, which tells me that my fitness and bike riding ability are improving as well. I'm looking forward to getting healthy and back to training. We would like to thank the organizers and volunteers of the Mine Hill Gravel Challenge for giving us the opportunity to have a fun and challenging race and a memorable experience on the quiet, rolling gravel roads of Roxbury, Connecticut. I would like to give a special thanks to the course marshal and the other volunteers who helped bandage me up after my crash. I'm sorry that I didn't get your names, because you deserve a shout out. If any of them are watching this video, they know who they are, and I just want them to know that their prompt assistance was very helpful to me, and I appreciate it. Also, thanks to our viewers who said hello to us at the event. It's very cool to meet our viewers in person whenever we can. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy our videos, please consider subscribing to the channel. Until next time, remember to enjoy your rides.